Okay guys, we are going to be going through quite a lot of functions today. So we've got round, small, large, power, rand, count, count a, count blank, count if, sum if, and if. And it'll actually go a lot quicker than you think. So I'm going to teach you all of these functions and then I will put together a really nice assignment for you. Uh, I mean a task, uh, exercise, activity that you can do uh, using all of these functions. Okay. So let's have a look at our first function. The first function is called round. Now remember what a function is and does, okay? It's kind of like a pre-designed set of instructions that calculate something for you based on the arguments that you give. It's called arguments. So the information that you give the function, it takes information and then does the calculations for you. So here we have an example of the round function. So I'm going to go to cell B3. There are my numbers, okay, from A3 to A7. In cell B3, I'm going to go equals round, and I'm going to round this, as I said here, to zero decimal points. So round, the number is going to be that number there. The number of digits, zero. In other words, no decimals coming after this number. And that rounds it off to 46. Okay, cool. So 45.77 becomes 46. Let's use the round function again, not rond. <laughs> round, there's the number there. The number of digits, I want one decimal point. So it's equals round a four comma one. All right, so the round number, number of digits. Great. Next one is rounding off to two decimal points. So equals round the number two decimal points okay there we go and that's what that does i'm gonna just drag that down because the others are going to be the same okay so that is the round function it rounds off a number to a uh, whole number okay if you say zero decimal points or to a certain number of decimal points that you tell it to so that's the round function the next one is the small function. Now you might be familiar already with the min function. We did that like in grade 10. So min is minimum, which shows you the lowest number in a range. So uh, low, uh, sorry, small is the same thing, okay? However, we have two arguments, an array and then which number. So the array is gonna be this range. I'm gonna just F for that so it makes it absolute and I can copy things down. And the number, I want to have the lowest number. So the first lowest number. Now obviously this is the same as min. So if you only wanted the lowest number, you would use min. There we go, so that's fine. So there you can see small, looks for uh, a range or an array, which is your range, and then you tell it which number you're looking for. In this case, it was one, the first smallest number. Let's do the next one and then we'll copy down. So the next one equals small. Uh, the array is here. There's my array. I'm gonna make that absolute because I wanna drag it down in a minute. And this one wants the second lowest number. So not the smallest number, not the minimum, the second lowest. So it's the second, number two. Small range, number two. Two for the second lowest. So there is the second lowest. I'm gonna drag this down, okay? And let's see, so we got the second lowest there. This is gonna be the third lowest, and I just have to change that to a number three to get to the third lowest. Change the next one to a number four. And the last one to a number five. Whoa, huts, let's fix that. Last one to a number five. There we go. Obviously, don't freak out that the numbers keep changing. These are all random. They just continuously keep changing because they're random numbers. Okay, it's the function that we're looking at. That's what I'm looking at. And there you can see the first lowest or the smallest number, the second lowest, third lowest, fourth and fifth. So that's the low. Then we get a uh, large, okay, so small and then large. So it's just the other way around. So equals large, okay. The array is our range over there. I'm gonna make that absolute if so I can just copy it down. The K means what number do you want? Well, I want the first largest or the first largest number, the highest number, the maximum number. And just like we had min, in the small, we also have max. Maximum gives us the largest. But we, we can also say large one, the first largest number, okay? The highest number. Drag that down. 
and then I can just change these so that'll be the second largest number that'll be the third largest that'll be the fourth largest and that will be the fifth largest there it is there so far so good and like I told you it's actually pretty darn easy now we get on to power this is cool guys squared and cubed and I mean we could go on forever here but I'm not going to uh, we're just going to use these ones so I've got some numbers in column a two four six eight ten and I'm going to use the power function to take that number and put it to the power of something so I'll explain so we go equals power okay two things here the number okay the number is here so I want the number two and what power do I want to raise it to now in maths if you have something raised to a power it's that times that so like two times two if I do it to the power of two two to the power of two is four because you say two times two okay so I'm gonna show you what it does and there it is look at that power a3 to the power of two drag that down there it is I've worked out the squared numbers of those numbers there they are just because I used the power function what about cubed could we use power to determine the cubed area of something or the cubed whatever volume I don't know I'm not a math teacher I'm a cat teacher um, teach yeah <laughs> equals cubed cubed oh, almost right equals cubed equals power select the number and we're going to raise that to the power of three so it's the number times itself three times two times two times two okay so two times two is four times two is eight so we should get eight all right so power to the number of three just yes, we get eight drag that down that should be like a thousand yeah there you go and that's what the power function does okay I think that's pretty easy all right go and have a look at my file when you get your hands on it and you'll see exactly what I mean the rand function now this has got nothing to do with money okay in South Africa we have rands so no um, I wish I did <laughs> we'd all be rich but the rand function is random it generates a random number however the rand function I'm just gonna looks like that and it generates a random number less than zero watch okay zero point Blah, did I say less than zero sorry I don't mean less than zero less than one between zero and one not less than zero that would be a negative number sorry about that scrap that go here let's just bring that down there you go and as you can see every single cell has a completely random decimal created in it okay and every time something changes on the worksheet it'll keep changing have a look see have a look see there we go so that's what rand does okay equals rand open and close your parentheses all right and that's a random number between zero and one so no whole numbers here okay no integers ah now we get on to the interesting functions that you will start to use a lot more this year and especially in grade 12 we use this a lot okay the count functions the first one I'm going to show you is the count function the actual original count function now this is how I teach it if you say to someone start counting what do they do they go one two three four five that's what they do they don't go Wednesday apple banana blue skies they, they don't count with weird names and numbers and they count in numbers they start counting in numbers that's a natural thing so think about it like that when you tell Excel to use the count function and you spell the count function correctly it counts cells that contain a number it's only numbers all right so if I say to Excel okay equals count and my range is going to be this entire range here these 10 cells that I've got here what do you think the answer is going to be is it going to be 10 no it's not it's eight and why is that because if we look at this range there are two cells there's one and there's one that do not contain a number they contain letters so Excel ignores them because they don't have a number so that's what the basic count function does it counts cells that only contain a number so in this situation eight cells in this range contain a number so the number is eight 
Let's look at uh, the alternative to this, count A. So count A will count a cell if it has a number or a letter in it. Okay, because in Excel you can have text and you can have numbers, or you can have a mixture of text and numbers. Okay, so if a cell contains data and it is not empty, it's not blank, then Excel will count it. So if we go count A for all, count all cells that contain data, count A, I'm going to select my range over here. There it is, I have 10 cells there. What do you think the number is going to be now? Let's have a look. So count A gives me nine. And why is that? Well, I've got letters in some, text in others, but there's one here that has nothing in it. So Excel ignores that because it does not contain anything. So in this range, if I go count A, it will count, uh, count A. Okay, okay. If I go count A, it will count everything from one down to 10 if it has something in it. And in this situation, one cell does not have anything in it, so it does not count that. Nine cells contain data. So then, logically, count blank is going to count blank cells. Exactly. So we go, oh my word, I better let you spell count. <laughs> count blank. Count Blankula, ho ho ho, that just came to me and I'm not editing it out, so sorry about that. Count Blank range, here we go, there we go. Now Count Blank is going to count the blank cells. I think this is the easiest one of all. Any cell that is blank, okay? Um, kind of like my brain just went now. Uh, yes, if it's empty and contains no data, no numbers, no letters, it'll count that cell. So, what's the answer going to be here? Two, I hope. Two it is, yes. And why? Because in this entire range, I've got that cell and that cell, those are empty. The others all contain something. So counting the blank cells, I have two blank cells in this range. All right. Ooh, this is a good one. Count if. Okay, so this starts getting a little bit more complicated, but not that much. All right, so count if. That means count something if it contains something, All right? Let me explain. So here we're going to do an account if, and we're going to say count the number of cells containing the word and. All right. So well, let's do it. So we go equals. Yes, I got it. Count if. There we go. Two things needed for a count if. We need the range. So where are we counting? And then the criteria. What are we counting? So where? Are we going to count and what are we looking for so the range is first it says so right there so i select my range done that's my range put my comma in there now it's looking for criteria right so what is my criteria my criteria is the word and so i'm using quotes because text goes in quotes okay so i'm, I'm looking for the word and finish off there with my closing parentheses press enter the answer is one. Let's check that. So if I have a look in this entire range, there it is there. The word and appears once. So only one cell contains the word and. All right, a lot of uses for this. Here's another one. The number of cells containing a number greater than 40. Well, let's do count if. Okay, that's what we're counting. Count if the range. We're going to select our range. There is our range. Now, what are the criteria what are we looking for okay we're looking for the cells that are greater than 40 okay now this is important because this is the one time in a function when you will use your quotation marks and it's not for a string it's not for text the reason is greater than 40 consists of a symbol and a number Okay, so a symbol is like text. You type it on the keyboard, okay? It's not a number. So we use quotations in a count if function when we're using operators. Please remember that, okay? Because in an exam, if you don't put those quotes, I'm going to show you what it does, okay? Watch this. If you just do greater than 40, that looks correct. Count if, B3 to B12, awesome. The criteria, greater than 40. If I press enter, 
I'm going to get this. And then you're sitting there in the exam and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. What have I done wrong? And you don't know. It's because your criteria needs to be in quotation marks because you are using an operator and a number. Okay, so count if there's my range, there's my condition or my criteria. Enter. Six cells are greater or have a, a value greater than 40. What about the number of cells containing a number of 50 and lower? 50 and lower. Well, let's go count if, okay, the range. Let's select our range, our criteria. Remember now we're going to be using an operator, so we use our quotes. So that will be less than, what am I doing? Yes, less than or equal to, what do we say? 50, yes, 50. I can press enter. I mean, you, you don't have to hit the end to close it. Press enter and it does it for you. Okay. Four cells contain a number of 50 and low. That's the count if. Now, the sum if. All right. Sum if. Well, I mean, logically, if count if was counting cells based on criteria, sum if is adding cells together based on criteria that we give it easy let's check it out here is an example I've got uh, t-shirt sales I've got to think about t-shirt sales or, or today I don't know why <laughs> and I've got uh, teams A B C and D so I've got four teams and January July November they went out and sold t-shirts throughout the year and I kept tabs on how many shirts each team sold now it's the end of the year and I want to know how many shirts did each team sell in total? That's where sum if is very powerful. So I'm going to go here in, in uh, G4 and we'll go equals uh, sum if, whoop, not sum if, sum if. And you'll see now we have three arguments to give Excel, three criteria here. So we have the range, the range. I'm going to choose the range is here. So the range is here, here it is here. Okay, so that's the first range. You're going to see that the, there's a second range coming. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for team A. Now, you can put the, the, the letter A like that. You can do that in quotes if you want to. It will still work. Or you could use uh, cell F4 over here because it just has the letter A in it. So you can pick. I mean, you can type A or you can choose the cell reference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then it wants to know, okay, I know the range. I know what you're looking for in that range. You're looking for the letter A. What, where, is the, where are the numbers? Where are the numbers that you want me to add? And that's the sum range. What do you want me to sum up? Okay. So that's the next range, which is this one over here. So range number one is what you're looking for when it finds it. Range number two is what it adds up. Okay. So let's have a look and see. In total, team A sold 81 shirts over the year. It went and looked down here. Every time it found the letter A, it then went to the sum range and kept a record of that and it added those together. Now, you will notice if I copy this down, and you hopefully will remember this from previous lessons, you will see that I have done something very wrong, okay? Because I haven't used absolute cell referencing here. And so my ranges are incorrect. And this might lead to incorrect data, which is a very, very bad thing. So if I go back to my uh, function over here, we have got sum if the B5, that first range, just click on the word range, or you can select that if you want. That keyboard shortcut, remember, F4 puts a dollar in front of everything. And then this range over here, the sum range, F4 as well, puts a dollar in. So now it's absolute. It's always going to reference those exact ranges, even when I drag it down. The only thing that's going to change, that F4, which is team A, is then going to become F5, then F6, then F7. Let's see if that works. Press enter. Okay. Let's have a look. That's perfect. I'm going to drag this down now. Beautiful. Now I can see, right, F4, F5, F6, and F7. So that's just another thing just to always remember, if you're referencing a range or you're referencing a cell and you know you're going to reference that range again or that cell again, Make it an absolute cell reference just to make it so much easier for yourselves. All right. And that is the sum if. The last one is the if function on its own. So now 
the if function is basically saying if this is true if you run a little test and that test is true then you must do something otherwise do something else instead let me explain that how like this okay so I'm going to say if the number in a3 equals 50 then say 50 with the letters 50 otherwise you can write the words not 50 right so here watch this equals if and here's the breakdown of if a logical test so that's kind of like the question or the test what do we do if the test passes okay if it is that value or not and what do we do if it's not the value okay so if the logical test what is the test if that equals 50 that's what I'm looking for so if a3 equals 50 what do we do what do we do if it is 50 what do we do if it's not 50 so if it is 50 then a3 does equal 50 and it's true that's awesome then we're gonna write the words 50 there we go F 50 <laughs> 50 50 oh my word I did it again 50 there you go oh yeah yeah I'm not an English teacher either so there we go ruled out maths and English I'm just gonna stay with cats so if a3 equals 50 write the word 50 otherwise what do we do if it doesn't equal 50 then we say not 50 okay there it is there the logical test if a3 equals 50 if it does equal 50 you're gonna say 50 otherwise doesn't equal 50 you're gonna say not 50 so let's see what it does okay it should say 50 perfect if I change this number I'm gonna change it to 51 51 and now B3 says not 50. Let's change it back to 50. 50. 50. The number of times I said 50 in this video is insane. How about if the, the number in A4 is less than 100, then we say good, otherwise bad. Let's do that. So equals if. So if the number in A4, if A4 is less than 100, if A4 is less than 100, then let's put the words good inside that cell. Or if it's not, let's write the words bad. Bad. There we go. So far, A4 is 100. It's bad. 101 is bad. 99 is good. I should have said equals equals to a hundred okay so I think it takes a hundred as the thing so let's test it again if a4 is less than a hundred good so if I make that 84 good 55 good 150 bad 120 bad 101 ooh, that was 101 101 bad 100 still bad because it's got to be less than a hundred that equals a hundred at the moment 99 good okay cool so that was with numbers and greater than or less than but what about letters how about how do we do this with letters okay it's the same principle guys so equals if so if that cell equals a then we write the word distinction how's that who does not want one of those otherwise fail yeah that's a tough school this one so if a5 and I didn't finish that I was supposed to say equals a you guys should have pointed that out for me should have pointed that out man there we go almost messed that up confused you so if a5 equals a all right a5 if it equals a the letter a a then write the word distinction otherwise write the word fail so it's test if it's true if it's false let's have a look <gasps> distinction B fail easy a distinction V <laughs> V for fail there we go and that is how the if function works so I'm going to give you guys an activity that's going to cover all of these functions and just get you to practice with them and see how you can use them in a real-life scenario so good luck